Welcome to fixing your disc brakes. There are four main causes of this noise, either cable tension, pad tension, caliper alignment, or a bent rotor. First step on making sure your brakes are tuned is making sure you have proper cable tension. I like to put the brake lever halfway between neutral position and the handlebar. Um, to adjust this tension, you can use the barrel adjuster uh, located on either the brake lever or the caliper itself. And to adjust those, there's uh, two screws. There's a lock nut and the actual adjustment screw. Uh, and to add tension, you unscrew both the lock nut and the barrel adjuster screw itself, and then re-tighten down that lock nut and make sure it's tight, and that will adjust your cable tension. Um, doing it on the brake lever or the caliper doesn't really matter. They both do the exact same thing, uh, depending on which setup you have. Um, but again, you want your brake lever to be approximately halfway between neutral and the handlebar. Um, once the tension is approximately where you want it, um, then you want to see what is actually causing the noise, whether it's the brake pad adjustment for gap against the rotor or whether they're crooked against the rotor. Once you've established your proper cable tension, you want to find a small gap between your brake pad and your rotors within the caliper. It can be kind of tricky to see. Uh, you can either use a flashlight to shine some light on the situation or put a white backdrop behind it so you can just clearly see that gap. Once you've established your line of sight, you want to uh, diagnose whether it's a brake pad tension, whether the pad's too close to the rotor and that's what's causing it to rub, or if the whole caliper itself is a little skewed. Uh, they are mounted with beveled washers so you can adjust the skew of the whole caliper to make sure that just the top or the bottom of the pad isn't rubbing. Um, you just want to make sure that all of that is level with the rotor. When you find your gap uh, and it's not a bent rotor and you can see that one pad is clearly rubbing, um, you can use a T25 wrench to adjust that gap. Um, to set a proper gap, you do want the rotor to bend as little as possible. Like right now, that rotor has to bend all the way to that pad. You don't want that. You want it to be as close as possible without actually rubbing so that the rotor itself has to bend as little as possible to reach that other pad. And there's still rubbing a bit. And right there's not rubbing. Now, the the inner pad adjustment can be done just as easily, but only done with the fingers. There's no wrench adjustment available. It is finger tension only, and you can adjust where that inside pad is. And again, you want it pretty close, but not rubbing. To adjust your caliper's position, there are two bolts with sets of beveled washers that allow you to tilt the caliper to get it parallel to the brake, braking surface of the rotor. Um, just use your eyes, try to get it as even and level as possible and slowly add tension. As you can see, I add tension and the brake pad or the caliper likes to move around. Um, if you hold it in place, add a small bit of tension, hold it in place, add a small bit of tension and rotate that tension back and forth until everything snugs down and holds itself in place. And then you can add your final torque to make sure everything stays attached. Something. Once you've established your proper cable tension, you think that your caliper is properly aligned and there's a, an equal distance uh, on, between the brake pads and the rotors, um, if it is still making a rubbing noise, then uh, it's probably your rotor is bent. Uh, to true the rotor, we recommend a park tool rotor truing tool, um, but an adjustable wrench can be used just as well, as long as you make sure that it's grease free. 
uh, just go ahead and clean the inside of your wrench before you actually go and try to rebend your rotor straight. Um, the park tool is really nice because it has the two slots. The longer slat is to grab the whole part of the rotor, the spline that goes all the way down to the hub, and you can bend the whole, the entire rotor. The small bit is whenever you get an, like a, a, a downward impact or just a, a, a blunt force to the top of the rotor, it can bend just the top of the rotor, in which case you don't want to bend the whole thing, you just want to get the top straight, and that's what the shorter key is for. Um, pretty much an adjustable wrench can only do the first one. It is kind of hard to bend a whole rotor with just the adjustable. You can use your fingers, grab the whole rotor, and just torque it into place. Um, it will work. It is a little tricky, and again, clean your fingers. You don't want to get grease on your rotor. Right now you can see that the rotor is bent to the inside and every revolution it will rub on that inside pad. To fix that, you want to locate where it's actually rubbing and you find the center of the rub so it's not rubbing here, not rubbing here, so in the center of that is the center of your bend and that's where you want to retrue by adding pressure and eliminating your bend. Once you've trued your rotor and leveled your pads and got your cable tension proper, uh, you'll go for your first ride and you'll hit a turn at some speed and you'll get brake rub noise. And this is normal. Uh, it can be minimized by having less cable tension and eff effectively having a larger gap between your brake pads and your rotor. Uh, this will just allow for more flex of that rotor within the caliper, hence lessening the brake rub noise around a turn. Tuning your disc brakes can be a little tricky and involved. Hopefully these were four simple solutions to eliminating your brake rub noise.